Tell me about uh, your new audio guides at the Broad. Um, we have four audio tours right now. Um, we're calling them self-guided tours. There's the family tour that features LeVar Burton, who was on Reading Rainbow, Roots, and Star Trek. So there's some name recognizability there. We have Artists on Artists tour, which is a um, different prominent artists in the collection talking about other artists' works in the collection. Sometimes they talk about their own work, but mostly it's a mashup of an artist who you you might be familiar with talking about something you've, a work that you've never heard them talk about. Um, then there's uh, Inside the Broad collection, which is, features Eli and Edith Broad speaking and the director of the museum, Joanne Heiler. Um, talking about different artworks and we've incorporated some music into that as well uh, and the architecture tour which features the architect of the museum um, going over some of the key features. So what's new about your audio guides? Um, well the artists on artists uh, tour especially is um, I think takes a bit of an unconventional uh, approach in that we were really influenced by the podcast sound, which I would characterize as personal, um, storytelling, intimate, uh, included, it includes people laughing or interrupting or stuttering, maybe some more ambient sound. Um, and it feels uh, more like you're getting some kind of exclusive look into something rather than sitting in a lecture hall being told what to think about um, a certain piece of work. Uh, what happens then when you mash up podcasting and uh, audio guides? When we first uh, tried to do a more radio type sound, uh, we got something that was too, it started competing with the artwork. It was, you know, if, if we're designing these things to be listened to in front of an artwork, um, you don't ever want to compete with what's on view. And, you know, we also have uh, video installations and sound uh, installations at the Broad, so uh, I think listening to an audio guide there is problematic but also you always want to be in service to the artwork enhancing visitors experience with the artwork and if there's too much going on in the ear um, it can be you know a distraction so how can it enhance uh, the experience um, uh, well we're looking into possibly designing um, audio tours to be taken uh, outside of the museum either before or after visiting. Uh, after would be ideal because you'd really have a sense of what the work looks like and how it functions. Uh, but there would also be um, pictures and more information in the app. But I think um, the audio tour is really just another level of engagement for visitors and I'd ideally like for it to be a place not just for um, didactic information but is um, maybe the sillier side or the uh, more off the cuff less planned more improvisational side uh, the in museum experience can seem so formal sometimes uh, with wall text and catalogs and even that you have to be around a lot of other people while you're there. So making it more casual and comfortable um, and getting people at ease with art, especially contemporary art, people can be so skeptical about contemporary art. So really trying to humanize that experience. Why, why is something that you think your five-year-old can do compelling um, and getting people to let their guard down? Uh, do you try to attract the younger people, younger visitors to the museum? We, with, without doing much, uh, we have somehow attracted that audience. We, our average um, age of visitor is 32, which is way, way younger than um, most museum visitors. I think the average age is higher, closer to 50 at most other museums. So we have a really strong, you know, uh, draw with millennials and uh, also I think lower income because they're younger so they haven't, you know, reached that professional status a, that a lot of other museums and also predominantly non-white, um, which is another really interesting uh, and fortunate thing. And uh, so we're 
um, I guess we just don't feel beholden to do what a typical museum is doing. It's a it's an area that we're experimenting in, and um, I think. F I'm not saying th that all of our visitors are listening to the audio as much as we'd like them to. So also figuring out how to tap into that young audience uh, is part of the work we have to do. But do you think it's because of the audio guides that you reach uh, younger visitors? Uh, I'd like to say yes, but I, I don't actually think so. Um, but knowing, you know, we just opened six months ago, so we really didn't know what we would, what audience we would attract. Um, but now knowing that I'm definitely, and moving forward, I'm definitely producing the guides with, uh, with that in mind and, and, and trying to find a sound that is both informative and educational, not taking, not talking down to people at all, but, um, you know, is, is something that they want to listen to. So your best recipe on a uh, perfect uh, audio guide, what would that be? Um, I think it's a combination of, you know, hearing something that you've never heard before. Um, it's, it's what good art does. I mean, it's, it will be a good, great compliment to, to, to art. It's, it makes you see something in a different way, um, increases your, um, empathy with the artist. I think that's maybe a word that should have been brought up, but empathizing, with the artist in their in their process is a great window into um, why a work of art is significant and how that it might reflect on your own life. Um, I think I the recipe for me in a short recipe would be to make the art seem relevant to uh, someone's personal story.